Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. Today's session is going to be the third in our little series on distortion functions and spectral risk measures. Uh, remember, we began by considering the pricing of a simple uh, binary risk, um, with all or nothing with a probability S of a loss. Uh, we came up with a distortion function, this increasing concave function that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1 that describes the price of a whole family of such risks that are indexed by their probability of loss. Uh, we then showed how we could price a more realistic risk that wasn't binary, could take an arbitrary set of values between 0 and, and some capital level A uh, by adding up the prices of each of the individual uh, components. And remember, we then described uh, the spectral risk measure rho associated with the distortion g as taking the value uh, the integral of g of s of x and the analogy here is the expected value is the integral of s of x the area under the the blue curve here and uh, rho is then adds the the margin the orange piece to get to increase the mean so i want to go through in detail how uh, to actually implement that um algorithm using um aggregate and then try and show you sort of a little bit behind the scenes of you know exactly how it's going on so you could you could even make a, a spreadsheet version of it if you chose the algorithm input is um a discrete random variable taking values xj with probability pj and then we've got our distortion function g and our associated spectral risk measure and remember we're trying to compute uh the integral of g of s of x or alternatively uh, we're trying to compute the integral of x g prime s of x f of x so this this piece here will be our adjusted uh, probabilities the algorithm steps uh, are to uh, first of all add, if there isn't a zero in here to start with add a zero uh, with probability zero if you're adding it we then sort the outcomes into ascending order and then we group by xj and we sum the corresponding pj. So what that means is uh, after we've gone through the first three steps, we've then got an increasing series of distinct outcomes with uh, probabilities. The first one, x0, could have probability 0. All the other probabilities will be uh, non-zero. What we then do is we figure out the survival function associated with this um, discrete distribution. Um, by subtracting the probabilities uh, from 1. So we start the probability that you're greater than 0 is 1 minus p0. Remember, p0 could be 0 if, if, it, if it wasn't in the original distribution. And then we keep peeling off each pj as we uh, go down the line. We then uh, apply our distortion function to compute g of sj. Uh, we then difference the sj to get our risk-adjusted uh, probabilities. So those are equivalent to the g prime f of x's that we show in the integral here. And then we do the sum product uh, to compute the value of rho g of x, xj times the differences that we've computed here. And obviously we could alternatively uh, compute the sum of uh, the g's times dx. So this would be computing the integral of uh, g of s of x dx, g of s of x, and then the differences of the xj's becomes uh, like dx. So I'm going to illustrate this using a very simple portfolio. This is the same as I used in the uh, video that I recorded with uh, David Wright recently. Um, so it's a little commercial auto book of business. It's got 10 claims, policy limit 10 million or 10,000 x of zero, so 10,000 policy limit. Um, severity is a log normal with a mean of 50 and a CV of 4. And we're going to assume a Poisson claim count distribution. So I'm just going to create that as an aggregate object. So remember what's going on behind the scenes here is it's made a discrete version of this distribution. It's using 2 to the 16 or 64,000 buckets. Uh, each bucket's size represents one quarter. It's passing all our validation tests. And so we're going to have here uh, the discrete uh, version of this. There's going to be 64,000 different versions of XJ that go zero, a quarter, a half, three quarters, one, and so forth. And then we've computed the uh, corresponding probabilities of each of those outcomes using the FFT routine. Now, uh, above, we considered a um, pretty uh, expensive distortion function that we called DIST. That was the one that priced a, a risk with a 10% chance of occurring at 30%. I want here just to also consider a, a slightly tamer version. 
I'm going to use a, a dual distribution. So the value here, um, g of s is given by 1 minus 1 minus s squared. 2 is, two is the, the parameter there. Um, just to remind you, the uh, distortion that we had before was a proportional hazard uh, square root. And you can see these two are sort of symmetrically different, right? This The proportional hazard here is charging more for tail risk on the uh, end, whereas the dual moment is more concerned about uh, the volatility risk uh, on the right there. So uh, we need to um, give, when we, we think about pricing here, we want to give a, a level of capital that's going to be supporting this portfolio. Uh, I'm going to assume, since we wrote a, a 10,000 limit, that we've got 10,000 available to pay claims, and we will uh, use a um, capital standard um, that uh, gives us that. The, the corresponding probability value of that, the chances the loss is greater than 10,000, is about uh, four, three and a bit basis points there. So to price this risk at uh, this capital level with this distortion, uh, we price, uh, we pass the regulatory uh, probability level and the distortion into the price method of the aggregate object. And it returns a little data frame here with eight uh, variables that we should look at. Uh, the loss, which is the limited expected value of the distribution at the 10,000 uh, capital level for 97.8. So that's slightly less than the unlimited loss of 498 because there's a slight haircut. Um, the premium, 729.2. Uh, the margin, the difference between the premium and the loss. The assets are 10,000 because that's what we selected with our probability level. The uh, capital is, is very high, 9,200 of capital. Uh, the loss ratio, about 70%. Uh, the leverage is extremely low, right? It's about 8%. Um, and as a result, the ROE is very low. To, that's uh, uh, 24.9 mil, so that's 2.5%. Um, and we can look also at what would happen if we use the first distortion we were uh, looking at, the proportional hazard. And you can see that's going to be a lot more expensive. We've got a lot of tail capital here. And the tail capital, because this bulges out more on the left-hand end, is much more expensive under the proportional hazard. So we would expect the premium to be higher. And that's what we see. A premium here is 11.45, margin 6.47. The loss ratios drop down to 43, 44%. Uh, the ROE is only 7% uh, 7, 7 coming out of this. So I'm not suggesting this is reasonable uh, pricing for the portfolio. This is around the mechanics of how uh, this is going to work. You can also price uh, using uh, the distortion, a distortion function. So you can pass in uh, essentially the information um, that the algorithm wants, so the X values and the probabilities. So um, if we just look here, A... Um, density df.p total, that's going to be a series that's indexed by the loss outcomes with values equal to the probability mass functions. So that's exactly the xj's and the pj's that we had in our algorithm. So you can pass that in along with the asset level, and it will price that uh, too for you. So 729 here is the price, 729 that we had up there, 167. Okay. So what exactly is it doing? It Well, what it's doing is the algorithm steps that we laid out. So let's try and reproduce those as clearly as we can. Let's extract from our density DF data frame uh, up to the 10,000 point. We don't care anything here that happens beyond 10,000 because we're truncating uh, the results at 10,000 and they all get uh, limited to 10,000. Let's pull in the uh, P total and also the survival function S. And then let's just take a look at some uh, values out of that sub data frame. And I, I call that bit because it's a, a bit of the density DF. So here I'm just asking for sort of every thousand uh, values. And you can see the P total values here. And you can see the survival function. And you can see there the 3.8 basis point chance that your loss is strictly greater than uh, 10,000. Now, this is taken from the aggregate object that doesn't know anything about the limit that we've imposed of 10,000. So we actually need to correct this because there's going to be a probability mass here at 10,000 um, corresponding to the probability that loss is 10,000 or greater. So we actually just need to adjust that by adding in to that row the probability that the loss is strictly greater than 10,000. So if we do that, um, we will get here and we will see we get a, a probability mass uh, coming in there. Yeah. All right. So 
This bit now contains the information produced uh, by the algorithm steps 1.1 through 4. In this case, our xj's are all automatically all distinct and they're in ascending order, so we don't have to worry about doing that or doing the grouping uh, process. Although you could argue that this last step we, here we did is grouping because you could argue um, you know, that all of the values after 10,000 here, they, the xj becomes 10,000 because of the action of the limit, and we're actually doing the grouping here um, to accumulate the probabilities. So the next step is, is step five, where we apply the G function. Uh, the distortion object has a G method, which applies the, the, the distortion function. So we can apply that and we can create G of S as the dot G of uh, bit dot S. So we've now added another column. If you're thinking of this as spreadsheet, your G S column here is just G of your S column here. And as we expect, all of these values are greater than the S value because the G function is increasing and it lies above the diagonal line. The next step is uh, to execute um, the differencing step. Okay, so we're going to have to do backwards differencing um, because that's uh, what it asks for. It's a decreasing sequence. We want positive numbers, so it's a, a backwards difference that goes on here in uh, in step six. Uh, and so to make that happen. Um, we're going to do minus diff. The, the diff operator acts as a forwards difference. So you do the negative of it to, to make a, a backwards difference. Um, we're going to prepend one so that we correctly compute the probability of uh, taking the value zero as one minus g of zero, a g of s of zero. Remember, s of zero is the chances you're strictly greater than zero. So one minus g of s of zero is the risk adjusted probability that you're equal to zero. Uh, we then take uh, all the other differences until we get to the end, but we append a zero at the end so that we pick up the right uh, mass in the last bucket there. So if we look at that, uh, we get this. So um, the risk adjusted probability is GP here, shown as the differences of the first column. So let's just uh, plot a graph of that and make sure that it's uh, reasonable and um, I'm going to plot on a, a log and a, a linear basis, and I'm going to plot the probabilities and the cumulative functions. So on the right here, we've got S in the blue and G of S in the orange, and indeed it's got a thicker tail. On below that, we've got the log density version or the log distribution version, and you can see the tail is indeed much thicker, and it's sort of getting you know further and further apart. Uh, on the left, we've got the probability mass function and then the log probability mass function. And as expected, the probabilities have increased. The blue objective is above the orange adjusted for values up to about 400. And thereafter, um, you get uh, the, the risk adjusted probabilities are higher. So let's just remind ourselves what we uh, expect the answer to be here when we do the pricing. We expect 729.167. And the last step in our algorithm says we should do that as the sum product of the risk adjusted probabilities. So that's the GPs times the losses. The losses are the index of our bit data frame, and we do indeed get 729.167. So we could uh, sort of illustrate that in a, a more sort of spreadsheet-like way here. Um, let's compute the sum product of the index, which is our loss outcome, times our GP. So this sum product column is GP here times the loss, and then I've added a total in at the bottom. And there you get your uh, 729 uh, coming through. We could also do the integral of S or the integral of GS. So that's going to be the cumulative sum of this column or the cumulative sum of this column. And it needs to just adjust for the delta Xs. Remember, we had that in there. Delta X is a quarter, it's the bu bucket size. And that's actually available to us as the element uh, dot BS in the A aggregate object. So here we're seeing the EL computed as the expected value of, uh, uh, of x. Here we're seeing um, the risk uh, adjusted expected value computed as the integral of g of s. And here we're seeing the risk adjusted expected value computed as the sum product of the outcomes and the risk adjusted uh, probabilities. And uh, I'll just end this. This is just comparing the uh, unlimited mean and the impact of the 10,000 uh, unit assets is, is a haircut you can see there of, of just a, a few tens of basis points.